Hi there, my name is David and I'd like to give you a quick tutorial on the use of Crossbonds Flip Analytics. When you open up your Flip Analytics tool, you'll be presented with a screen similar to the following. The screen will have two buttons, Choose Patient or Quit. We'll press Choose Patient to load a patient. You'll see that two patients already exist here. The reason for that is that Flip Analytics automatically remembers the last folder you were in and it will pull in patient details from that folder. If you'd like to pull in patient details from a different folder or perhaps from a USB key, you can press locate files and you can find where the files are, press the file and press open to bring them in. I'm not going to do that because the files I'm interested in are actually already here. So I'm going to go into this John Doe patient, so I click on the patient and click OK. Now this loads the data from our John Doe patient. If we press play, it will start playing the procedure like we were in in the procedure and it, at the moment it's playing at just regular speed so it'll play for the length that the procedure took. Using our keyboard we can press the up arrow will increase the speed. Every time we press it up it'll increase it by another amount. So at the moment it's going to increase by a factor of 2, we press up a factor of 3, 4, 5, 6 and 7 with each press. To decrease the speed we just press the down arrow on our keyboard so that's down, down, down as you can see we're back down to regular speed now and we're playing from then. Across the top of the screen you'll notice that the patient's name is displayed, the patient's ID is displayed and also a magnifying glass. This magnifying glass is used to zoom in on the image so if there was a particular part of the image that you wanted to zoom in on you could press that zoom and it would zoom in and pressing it again zooms the image back out. Beside that you'll see that there's a symbol. That symbol is filtering. So this filter tells you that filtering is turned on. We'll later discuss how to change filter settings. So if we'd like to save an image, perhaps the image on screen is of interest to us and we'd like to save that image. We can press save image and we can decide to either save it without a comment, save it with one of the predefined comments, or edit our own comment. So to edit our own comment, we press on any of the comments, press edit comment and put in our comment. So let's say our comment will be flip and then press OK. So if you go into compare image, in compare image using the over and back arrows you'll see that we've got a few snapshots saved. So the first snapshots were used during the procedure and then you'll see that our flip comment is here. So we press on the image that we'd like to compare and press OK. If we just collect one image it will compare that image with a live image as shown. So we've got our image that we're comparing and our live image. We can press play to play the data while keeping the, le the snapshot still. If we'd like to compare two snapshots we can clear that compare, press compare again, select two snapshots that we'd like to compare. So let's say we'd like to compare the flip snapshot with the after procedure snapshot and we press that and as you'll see side by side the two different snapshots. As you'll see the diameters for each snapshot are sewn down each side, the pressures down below and in the DMEN CSA section you'll see that the diameters on the left are for the left image and the readings on the right are for the right image. Clearing the compare then brings us back to our image. Now if we knew that something interesting happened after we took a snapshot we may like to watch the procedure from taking the snapshot. So if we press go to image and scroll to the snapshot we like, let's say for example test 2 and press OK. It will go to that image, so this is where the image was taken and we can press play and view from where this image was taken. If we'd like to go to a time, so let's say we'd like to go to a time of 9.20.30, which would be instead of 9.19.31, we'd go to a time, so hours 9, time 20, and seconds 30 press the go to time button, you'll see we've now gone to the time 9.20.30. So if we play from here at this time of 9.20.30, you'll see we have a nice smooth image on screen which has a nice hourglass shape. Seems to be very little movement in the image. The reason for this is that the filtering option is on, as you can see by the arrow up above. So if I just pause that image for a moment and I go back to the same time, 9.20.30, and I press my menu button and my filter settings button, you'll see that I've got different filter settings. At the moment I've selected a weighted average filter of high. I could also decide to have that as a medium filter or a low filter by pressing on those buttons. 
I could also decide to have a standard average filter, of which I could decide to sample over a certain number of seconds using the up and down arrows. Or I could choose to turn my filter off altogether. So after changing one of those settings, I've changed it to off now, I'm going to press the Save Changes button to save that. So now you'll see the filter is off, so I don't have my filtering icon. So I'm going to replay the image which we played earlier, which you remember was nice and smooth, from time 9, 20, 30, and this is without filtering. So you'll see now, without filtering, that the image actually isn't as smooth as we thought at all. There's actually quite a lot of movement as I was simulating coughing by squeezing and letting go of the balloon rapidly, as you can see here. So this is what filtering does to the image. Now we'll pause that image. Let's say, for example, we were interested in something that happened at a particular volume in the balloon. So let's say at 30 mil, we were interested in something. So what we'd do is we'd enter the volume of 30, and we'd decide to either go to the previous instance when the balloon was at 30 mil, or the next one. So I'll decide to go to the previous one. And then you'll see you're brought back to the time when there's 30 mils in the balloon. So if I play from there, you'll see that we were inflating at the time. So now it's inflating 33, 34, 35. Now, if I want to go to the next time that there was 30 in the balloon, I press go to next. And it'll take me right up here to the next time when there was 30 in the balloon. If I was interested in something, or maybe I wanted to print out this or one of the snapshots we had from earlier, we can press the print data button, which will allow us to print to our printer or to print to a JPEG image so that you can copy and paste the image into, let's say, Microsoft Word or a package similar to that. Finally, in our menu, there was two options which we haven't discussed, those being user preferences and change patient details. Change patient details can be used to change the patient's details, and you can change everything apart from the patient ID, which cannot be changed. If you make any changes, you will press the Save Changes button and confirm those changes and be brought back to the main screen. Using the User Preference menu, we can also change the language of the software if we'd like to change it into one of the following languages. We can change the pressure units into any of the following, and we can change the readings to either be displayed in millimeters or French. If we make a change, let's say I'll change to displaying in French now, we need to press the Save Preferences button, and when we go back to the main screen, you'll see that our image is now in French. So if we play from here, you'll see our French, our D-men is now French men, and our cross-sectional area is still cross-sectional area. Now, pressing this will also give us the screen of distensibility and compliance. So if we want to go and look at these figures, we can, during my procedure, for example, if I pull up some images in my after procedure, if I press play, you will see I will... I'll actually bring up an image where the distensibility and compliance are valid. So I'm going to go to the image of after procedure. I'm going to play from here. So you will see we have values here for distensibility and compliance. So these are taken from the minimum diameter and are taken from two electrodes below and above the diameter and they give particular readings. So by looking at the screen you can see if the reading is where you want it to be. Toggling the screen will bring it between the minimum and cross-sectional area to distensibility and compliance. So that concludes our tutorial on FLIP. If you have any questions, um, please feel free to email us at info at crossbon.com. That's I-N-F-O at C-R-O-S-P-O-N dot com. Thank you.